Shadowgate 64 came out during that period where everything was making the jump to 3D. Some games made the jump, others died in the arse. The story this time is fully explained in the game opening. A little too fully explained. This text scrolling thing clocks in at 1 minute and 40 seconds. <sighs> One thing I want to mention quickly is the cover of both games. The NES game cover looks triumphant with this gargoyle breaking free. The 64 game just looks like an inflamed pee hole. I know it's supposed to be a dragon's eye, but all I see is a fat red knob. Red dragon, red dragon. <laughs> Shadowgate 64 takes place a century or so after the first Shadowgate. In this game you are Del Cottonwood, as opposed to the nameless hero from the original game, where it never seemed to mention your name at all. However, throughout this game you'll discover that the original hero's name was Lord Jahir. The history of Shadowgate is much better explained in Shadowgate 64, as you'll find a never-ending amount of books to draw knowledge from. So yeah, you find yourself back in the same world of Tyragon, but this time everything has become way more dodgy, as thieves and bandits seem to have taken over. The roads surrounding Gatekeeper Mountain have become particularly dodgy, as this opening cinematic shows. I gotta say, it feels kind of odd to see 2D animation in the Nintendo 64 game. I really don't think there's much else like this on the system. So yeah, while traveling, your carriage is besieged by bandits, and then you're taken into the Shadowgate dungeons to be executed. Seems a bit harsh. Right, I'm ready to play Shadowgate 64. I'm pumped up after the first game. Let's fucking go, man. Eventually you break out of your cell using an expertly hidden trapdoor. You head into the sewers and suddenly that Da Vinci Code difficulty is back with full force. Now I won't go into detail with this like I did with the NES one, but I can assure you that you will contract Super Alzheimer's from at least one of these puzzles. You end up running into the ghost of Lockmere. That's right, the same guy from the first game. Lockmere pretty much gives you your quest. Complete the Trials of the Four Towers, uncover the mysteries of this world, and again try to prevent the resurrection of the behemoth. At the start, everything feels pretty lonely, but as you progress, you'll bump into tons of creepy looking townspeople and also many ghosts. Definitely one of the coolest things in this game is being able to talk to the dead. There's just something so cool about seeing a skeleton in the water early on in the game, and then actually getting to talk to its spirit later on. One thing that's lacking a bit in this game is the iconic deaths aspect. I mean, they still do occur, but they don't pack quite the same punch as the first game. Also, they occur far less frequently. It's not too much of a problem though, because the 64 game makes up for it by removing the dumb torch lighting thing from the first game. Wait, if there's two torches over there, why did the room go black when my torch went out? <sighs> a lot of items in this game are really cool too. There's simple fun in finding strange objects hidden around the castle. Quite a few of them serve no puzzle use, but are still pretty cool to look at. Some objects I swear you can barely see, like this pickaxe you need at the beginning. You see it? Neither do I. Wait, it's there? Well, okay then. Sure, why not? This game opts for a realistic dark fantasy style, as opposed to the still quite dark but a bit goofier look of the NES one. To me, 64's art style is the better of the two. It really captures a feeling of a bleak, black, plaguey, middle agey time. I also believe the soundtrack of this game to be the best of the two. The original had some pretty eerie tracks, but they still felt a tad more upbeat. 64's soundtrack feels really dark and sinister and gives off much more medieval energy. I mean, like whatever one you like, it all comes down to personal taste. I still love the NES one, but the 64 one really knows what it's doing. Amazing. Just amazing. You liked it. You really know your way around that area. Now unfortunately, this would be the last new entry into the Shadowgate series, but I can say it definitely did end on a high note. There was, however, going to be a sequel named Shadowgate Rising. It looks like it would have followed in the same footsteps as Shadowgate 64, but unfortunately the game was cancelled, most likely due to the GameCube coming out the same year. 
It's a real shame because a sequel to Shadowgate 64 would have been super cool. There's very few screenshots that exist of this game, and information is pretty scarce. From the information I have found, this game was in a mostly finished state, and was even going to be released on PC at one point. In Shadowgate Rising, you would have played as a female character, in a world where the belief of magic has withered away. It would be up to you to discover powers within yourself that would allow you to control magical artifacts. Also, boobies. Alright, review done. I'm off. Boom boom. Boom. Wait a minute. Just let me get this. Please, continue. No way, old man. These are mine. Now back off. Now that's over, I'm going for a nap.